everybody welcome to a new video today I would like to share with you some little collateral tips to uh, approaching an Ironman 70.3 race and these have more to do with like logistics and making sure that everything is ready and nothing is left to chance so first off the first thing that needs to be done uh, when you decide you want to do an Ironman 70.3 race is to register for the race and this I know sounds kind of like uh, super basic but I don't think it is because first off a lot of the races go sold out even like one year before or at least some months before so you can't really decide to do a race um, a week before let's say but of course that's not something that we would want to do because the preparation takes way longer than one week uh, but yeah we need to find a target race and finding a target race specifically I think needs to be done assessing our strengths and our weaknesses so if we are strong on the flats on the bike if we are strong swimmers if the race is wetsuit legal uh, if the run is flat and after taking into consideration all these things the other thing I would say is to make sure that the location is logistically easy to reach so if I were to start from Turin, Italy, it would be way harder for me to go, let's say, I don't know, to Kazakhstan uh, compared to Ironman 70.3 Barcelona, let's say. Uh, because Barcelona is really well connected, there's a lot of flights and it's really easy to get there. Maybe Kazakhstan is a bit more of a hassle. So make sure that logistically uh, it's easy to reach and personally I would say first race the best thing to do is just to have a local race so somewhere maybe you can drive maybe your girlfriend can come with you and it like takes away so much stress from uh, the preparation of having to pack up the bike I see so many people who are going nuts on uh, the internet because they don't know what to do they don't know how to take their bike with them on the plane and I must admit for me it's really easy because I had a little like bike shop way back like 10 years ago where I learned to assemble and disassemble the bike so I can travel with it no problem I have it with me here now and I didn't take it to a shop to get reassembled and I just flew with it in a like cardboard box basically but yeah local race for the first one that's what I would do then getting closer to race day let's say that all the training went well everything went good I would say make a really detailed list like two weeks before make a really detailed list of every single thing that you need there's many of these on the internet you can find them divide them into swim gear bike gear run gear and then transition zone gear like what do I need for transition what do I need to have a spare of in case something happens or I lose something nutrition so have a big big list for nutrition what you're gonna take what gels you're gonna take experiment with this stuff in training and then on race day it's just executing the plan but yeah, make a huge list with like check boxes and make sure you check all the boxes. Something that I would say is also be prepared for things not go the way that you want them to go. So always have a spare tube, CO2 cartridge. I personally opt to have a, a mini pump because a CO2 cartridge maybe won't work, but with a mini pump, you're good to go in any situation. And one thing that I also had as a really, 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 let's say, or oh, remote possibility, but it did happen to me in training once was a spare bike chain link because once in training no twice actually i did snap my chain so that is one thing that could completely end your day because if your chain breaks you literally can't do anything about it unless you have the tools so i had a little tool to like unscrew the um, the chain link and a false link to in order to be able to recompose the chain and just make it to the end of the race and this maybe sounds a little bit over the top, you know, like, oh, I mean, that's never gonna happen. But if you're like me and you have invested months and a lot of time in your life geared to one single day because the race is one single day and you don't want anything to end it prematurely like a broken chain, I think the 50 grams extra on the bike are absolutely worth it. Next thing would be race day logistics. So really start thinking about if you have to book a flight book it a lot of time before think about how many days you want to stay at the location before the race and in my opinion it's like the most days you can without overdoing without staying like i don't know two weeks of course but maybe like three days 
is a good thing because maybe you get there one day, uh, travel, hassle, you can't do much. The next day, maybe you do the bike recon on the course. Uh, you have one more day where you can like maybe cycle, maybe do a little run, then complete rest day before the race and then race day. I think four days is a good shot. Even if you have like some problems building back your bike back up, you can fix them. You can find um, solutions and you're not going to be like running around with, with your head like exploding because you can't find one piece that you need. Then you have registration. So you need to go register at the race venue where they're going to give you all your stuff for transition. They're going to check your document. They're going to check your triathlon license that you can also buy there extra. But I personally had my Italian one, so no problem. And they're gonna give you all the goodies to like, you know, the race package plus the stuff for transition. And this leads into the final crucial preparation for your Ironman 70.3 or full distance Ironman, which is prepping the transition bags. And this is absolutely crucial because once you have prepped them and left them in the transition zone, oftentimes, like in Ironman 70.3 Italy, you can't access them anymore because the racking is done in the morning of the race. Especially now during COVID, it's like uh, there should be specific times where you are required to be in the transition area to rack your stuff. So be very mindful of that. Another thing is always read the rules for the race because there are some things that a lot of people don't know, like you cannot receive any assistance at all whatsoever from anybody else. There's this one story of one guy who got disqualified because he accepted some lip balm from his girlfriend during the run. So read the rules, drafting. I think it's uh, it's worth it uh, if you want to have a great race. Pre-race briefing, that's going to happen also. So there's going to be, now I think it, it might be online because uh, of uh, COVID, but usually there's like this big briefing where there's a um, race director that basically explains all the rules, all the courses, how transition is going to work, all the times, when the gun is going to go off. And yeah, listen to that uh, fairly carefully because there might be some good insights that can help during your day. And then we get to the final piece of the puzzle, which is absolutely crucial. And it is transition bag preparation. So you get one T1 bag, which is from swim to bike, where you're going to put all your bike stuff. And then you get one T2 bag, which is from bike to run, where you're going to put all your run stuff. I say when you are preparing these bags, really like think about only that. Don't do it like just maybe while you're doing other stuff, just really focus on it. And what I did personally was lay everything out all the bike stuff, lay it out, take a picture. All the run stuff, lay it out, take a picture. Then like chill out five minutes, do something else, and then look at the picture and see if something was missing. Very, very important, I think, because if you're missing something in the transition bag, you're gonna pay for it on race day. Even here, maybe having a list can be very useful. Maybe packing uh, in the T2 bag some extra socks because maybe it rains on the bike and maybe you want to change your socks in T2. So always be aware of what the weather's gonna do. Extra nutrition, so putting some extra nutrition in the, the T2 bag so you have something for the run, like that you can just stuff in your pocket. I found that very, very helpful. But basically, yeah, making lists, uh, checking stuff off, laying everything out really clear, really in a moment when you're really relaxed and having everything laid out can really help with like, hey, giving us confidence that we're ready for the race, like everything is laid out, everything is ready. And B, ensuring that we don't miss anything on race day, which would be really, really bad. Like there's some people like Triathlon Taran who say their recurring nightmare is getting to the bike in T2 and they have no shoes or no pedals on the bike, which is like, I know it's a crazy nightmare, but I mean, it can impact your state of mind a lot. Double check everything. And then once you're absolutely sure, go to transition zone, look for your number, and rack the T1 bag and the T2 bag. One thing that I must say is it's really simple if the transition zone is one only transition zone. That is the case for Ironman Italy, but it is not the case for Ironman Tallinn. Ironman Tallinn is two transitions, which is actually, it's pretty cool actually, but it's just is more logistical prep because you need to drop your bike bag off in one spot and then you need to drop your run bag into another spot. It just adds a bit of complexity to uh, our day and what we need to do, which when we are a lot of time out from the race, it doesn't seem like much, but when we are very close to the race, it can really add on stress and can be like an extra factor that maybe can be avoided if we just choose a race that has one single transition zone. So yeah, that's the logistical advice I would give myself if 
I were to do my first Ironman 70.3 race again. Nothing like super crazy, but it's just things that need to be planned out and executed. And by taking some time, making lists and taking photos, it can be a lot more of an easy process to, to do compared to just like throwing stuff into bags and not knowing if we put the correct stuff inside. Hope you liked this video. Uh, if you found it useful, please consider giving it a like and subscribing to the channel. It would help a ton with the growth of it. If you want me to talk about anything specific, please leave a comment down below. I'm down for questions, uh, any ideas for other videos, and I will catch you in the next video.